All right, so this video we're going to look at uh, graphing cos uh, cosecant function. Now, uh, in order to graph cosecant, you've you need to know how to graph the sine function. And in this video, I'll do I'll I have three examples. I'm going to do one example. It's going to have its own video. One of them will be just a regular, straightforward, you know, graphing. Uh, another one, it'll have a left or right shift in it, and then that'll be example two. And example three will have a left, right, left or right shift, and it'll have a up or down shift in it. Okay, so check all three of them out. All right, so first let's just look at graphing a sine function. So if we have y equals sine of x, okay, as long as you can graph this, you can graph a cosecant. So just real quick, we know we know the period is equal to 2 pi over b, and b is the number in front of x, so we can see in this case b is 1, and so our period is 2 pi. And if we graph this, and we're going to graph it over one period, we'll graph it from 0 to 2 pi. And we know that, and we need to mark, break this up into four equal intervals. Okay, so we'll go halfway between 0 and 2 pi, which is pi. Then we'll go halfway between pi and 2 pi. And Remember to go halfway, it's just pi plus 2 pi is 3 pi, and then half it, so 3 pi over 2. And then halfway here, 0 plus pi is pi, divide that by 2, that's pi over 2. And the max and min, the amplitude's 1, so our max and min is 1 and negative 1. And I do have a video on the sine function. Uh, graphing it, check that out. It goes into a lot more detail than what this does. Okay, this video is kind of assuming that you know how to graph a sine function. All right, so what we know about the sine, once we break it up into these intervals here, we know the sine function starts out at zero and then it goes to its maximum and then it goes back to zero and then it goes to its minimum and then it goes back to zero. And so this would be our sine function. That would be the graph of the sine. But the main thing is getting these points here. Okay, you got to get these points here. And then you know that it goes zero, max, zero, min, zero. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at our example. All right, so let's take a look at example one. We have y equals three cosecant one fourth x. All right, so to graph this thing, we need to get the period, and we can see it's not going to shift left or right any. Uh, so let's get the period. So the period. is equal to, remember, 2 pi over b, which is 2 pi over b, and b is the number in front of x, so that's 1 fourth, and so that's 2 pi times, so it's 2 pi divided by 1 fourth, so it's 2 pi times the reciprocal, so times 4, which equals 8 pi. So there's the period. Now, in order to graph cosecant, what we do is we graph the sine function as a guide. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph y equals 3 sine of 1 fourth x. And that's just as a guide. Okay? All right. So we've got the period 8 pi. So let's Let's mark that off. And so that's 0, 
to 8 pi. And then we have to break this up into four equal intervals. So we need the midpoint of 0 and 8 pi. And I'll just come over here and just show you how to find the midpoint. I know in this one it's easy, but you add the two endpoints together. And then you half it. And so the midpoint would be And so the midpoint would be 4 pi. And then we need the midpoint between 0 and 4 pi. Well, let's see. 0 plus 4 pi is equal to 4 pi. And then we half the 4 pi. And then that's 2 pi. So this midpoint here would be 2 pi. And then we need the midpoint here between 4 pi and 8 pi. So that's going to be whoop, that's going to be 4 pi plus 8 pi is 12 pi and then we half the 12 pi which gives us 6 pi. And so this midpoint here is 6 pi. All right. <clears throat> now that we have the now that we have it broken up into four equal intervals. Now we can sketch our sine curve. Okay. Now to sketch the sine curve we need the maximum and minimum value. Well that comes from this value here. Okay. That's the, the amplitude is 3. So we know the maximum height is 3 and the minimum height is negative 3. And if you remember earlier when we went over a basic sine function, it starts out at 0 and then it goes to its maximum and then it goes to 0 and then it goes back to its minimum and then it goes back to 0. Okay, so there's our point for the sine. And that and if you if you plot if you do these five points every time that's exactly how your sine function is going to look zero max zero min zero okay and then what we'll do and I'll do this in a different color is we're going to draw our sine function in with a dashed line and if you remember a dashed line means that this graph is hidden this is not part of the graph Okay, this dashed line is not part of the graph, it's just a guide. Okay, now if you remember, if you remember, cosecant, cosecant x is 1 over sine x. Okay, well, if you look at this point here at 0, at 4 pi, and 8 pi, <coughs> sine is 0. So that means we would have 1 over 0, which is undefined. So at this, at x equals 0, we have a vertical asymptote. And at 4 pi, we have a vertical asymptote. And at 8 pi, we have a vertical asymptote. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Now we can sketch the cosecant function. So once you, once you have the sine function in and you have your asymptotes, then at the max and min values, you draw in your U-shaped branches for cosecant. And that would be the graph of cosecant. Okay. And, and what you can see, if you notice here the y value of sine of the sine function, you see how the y value gets smaller and smaller. See here, the y value of sine is three, and then it gets smaller. See the see how the y values they get smaller and smaller. Well, as the as the sine function gets smaller and smaller, that means this denominator here is getting smaller and smaller. 
So if the denominator of a fraction keeps getting smaller and smaller, the entire fraction gets larger and larger, and that's why the cosecant function is increasing here. And that's the same argument here, except for you can see the y values of the sine function are negative, so that's why it would make the whole fraction negative, and it goes like this, and it turns down. Okay. All right, so I hope the video helped. Uh, check out the other ones. Uh, examples two and three. Uh, I hope the video helped. Check out my other videos and thanks for watching.